Um, so just to set the scene, the average person can only hold about seven pieces of information in their working memory at any time. And it's really important to have this context because when you're pitching an investor, you need to remember that they can't hold that much information. And so you need to be really clear with what you're putting on your pitch deck to make sure that they're only taking away the salient points with them. I'm going to try and make this as interactive as possible. So, ah, there you go. If you take a look at this slide, can you just write in the chat why you think this slide is not the best slide you've ever seen or why you think this shouldn't be how information is presented on a slide? I'll try and keep an eye on the chat at the same time. Um, the, oh, the overwhelming feedback is that it is overwhelming. <laughs> That's exactly it. So um, there's a number of reasons that this slide is a bad slide. And everything that we're talking about today is is stuff that myself and MA have both seen uh, when we've been pitched like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times. Um, and so we're going to try and just go through some best practices and some things that have gone wrong. So there are multiple reasons why this slide isn't great. Um, why can it not click? Oh. oh, right. Especially if there's 25 of them. Because if you've got an overwhelming amount of information on the first slide, and then you do that, and you've got 25, 30, 40 sl uh, slide decks, page slide decks, you're going to be 125 plus points that you're trying to make, and the investors just cannot keep up with everything that you're trying to say. Um, so we're going to go over a few reasons why that slide in particular was bad, and then we're going to show you what you should have on the slide deck. So... Our business is a great SaaS and ML AI Web3 business. We see this a lot, like using the sexy terminology or the terminology that you think is going to make investors sit up and listen. Investors actually don't love just seeing this on a deck. What they want to know is the what you're actually using that technology for. So it's better to say that you are solving this problem in this way using AI and actually be using AI for a function rather than just listing all of these buzzwords, which you think is gonna increase your valuation or make investors more interested in your business. Uh, we see this a lot as well, which is actually kind of crazy. On the first slide deck, there are two different one sentence descriptions about what the business does. And those two one sentence descriptions are different to one another. If you, have, if you come up with your one sentence description of what the business does, it should be the same one sentence description that you use all of the time. So it's on the first slide of your deck, and it's on your LinkedIn page and it's on your website a bit like Shah was saying. Um, we're fixing climate crisis, another thing that's totally unrelated um, to any of the other points on the deck. And a little stat that 80% of people that we asked said they really care about the climate. So a lot of people do this as their initial validation of the problem. They try and fix a large problem and then they validate it by saying that people care about the problem but that doesn't mean that people are going to pay for your solution so it's not really that helpful to have that stat in there you need to relate it back to business in some way um and then oh there was another one it doesn't matter i keep going back there's not bullets oh yeah there you go um, and we're growing year on year. So we have some people that mention this right up front and they put a chart in there, but there's no context to the chart. So just make sure if you're putting any information in about growing, you know, is it over the period of the last 12 months, the last six weeks, what, what's the scale? Just make sure that everything is contextualized. Overall, it's just that there's too much going on. So in your slide deck, each slide can only contain one key takeaway. And I think that should be the key takeaway for this session. So every single slide that you're building into your deck, think of what is the one thing that I want an investor to take away from this. And we'll go through what we think they are. But the TLDR is if there's too much text, it's too much information. Um, if any of you know Guy Kawasaki, he has a rule of thumb. You should be able to fit everything you want to say on a slide deck in size 30 font. If you start putting on size 20 font or even size 10 font in order to be able to fit everything in, you've got way too much information on the slide. Uh, and that also brings me to the point about continuous prose. We see a lot of statements on slide decks and it's just written as continuous prose. I couldn't be bothered to actually write a bunch of continuous prose out. So here's ChatGPT's 
reasons why you shouldn't use continuous prose on the slide deck. Um, but just try and keep every any word that is not necessary to the point that you're trying to make, which could be and, the, or any connecting words, remove them. Just the fewer words you can possibly have on the deck, the better. Okay, so we're gonna get on to the 10, 10, which is actually now 11, slides that you should have and what to put on them. This is very consistent with what um, Capital Pilot think as well. There are a few different nuances, but overall they're the same. And we're gonna talk a bit about financial projections at the end. The main thing that you need to remember when you're uh, sending out a deck to investors is that there's two things. You might, one, you might be sending out a deck and you're not actually pitching the deck. So they're just receiving it as a PDF attachment or as a link. And you need to take them through the whole story without you being able to actually speak to the slides on the deck. So the deck has to tell the whole story itself. And the second thing is the whole purpose of them receiving the deck is just to get the follow-up meeting. So all you're trying to do is not give them reasons to say no at this point. And actually the more information you give them, the more opportunity you're giving them to say no. So as an example, if you do put the valuation on, on a deck, and the valuation is too high for them, they might just write it off. So don't put the value on, don't put the valuation on the deck. You can have that conversation later. We feel the same way about financial forecasts. You don't need to have them on the deck that you're originally sending out. You don't want to give them a reason to say no based on what your financial projections look like. That can be a conversation later. So everything is information to get them excited and to tease them into wanting to have that meeting at the end. So this is our 11 slides, very similar to what Capital Pilot say. So we'll just go into them in a bit more detail. Um, so one of the main issues with the first slide that we've noticed is people don't use the valuable real estate that is on this slide. This is the very first thing that an investor is gonna see of your pitch. And they make about five seconds to make a snap decision about whether they're interested or not. So if you just have your company name, and maybe your email address on this slide, you're not using almost 10% of your entire deck to your advantage. So the thing that should be on this slide is a one line description of what you do. And that should be enticing and making, making investors think, I really wanna understand more about this. We're gonna talk about narrative um, and storytelling tomorrow or Friday. So we're gonna go more into how to use the one liner on, the, on this deck, but it should be visionary and it should be bold and it should be yeah, really provocative to get investors to want to read more. Uh, you should also use this as an opportunity to set the tone of what your brand is like. So make sure you have your logo on there, make sure it looks as nice as possible. I'll go into some more tips for that later, but you have to have the one line description of what you do. And if you haven't got a one line yet, yeah, um, I just saw that Sam from Hambro Perks, if you don't follow him on LinkedIn, you should. He's given some tips on how to write that one liner. Um, so you go straight into the problem that you're solving. The main thing that investors think when they see a deck is that you don't really understand the problem. And if they think that you don't understand the problem, the whole rest of the deck is kind of irrelevant to them because how do you know that your solution is addressing that problem and how have you worked out the market size? So when you're articulating the problem that you're solving, you wanna say who is facing this problem? How does it impact them? How do you know that it's a problem which, which should be data driven? And how do you know the scale of the problem? Because you want to get investors to really feel the pain here, especially if you're educating them on a market that they don't really know anything about. They need to come away feeling that it's a big problem and it's a big problem for a lot of people. And they need to be like, yeah, I can see why people would pay for a solution to this problem. So for the solution needs to be linked directly to the problem. Sounds like an obvious thing to say, but again, most people don't necessarily link the solution to the problem. So they'll say, I'm solving um, loneliness and here's my HR software solution that does it kind of thing. And it's just not linked enough. It's trying to be visionary. And then there's just like a complete disconnect between the solution. So make sure it links directly to the problem. Talk about the benefits to your users. Don't get stuck in what features your, your product has at the, at the moment. Talk about why these features are important to your users and everything must be benefit-led, not feature-led. And use product shots if you can. Investors, if you don't have product shots in your deck, they'll assume that you don't have a product. 
So if you want to prove that you've already built an MVP or a prototype or a proof of concept where you've got something, put product shots in because then no investor just knows that you've, you've got something that you've been working on already. Uh, business opportunity. So um, we've just gone through this in quite a lot of detail, so I will run over it. We've tried to simplify exactly what the TAM, SAM and SOM is. Um, so average revenue per user multiplied by the total number of potential users. That is the equation for the TAM. Uh, you need to have some research into what the total user number could be. But just think if your product was global and it was being used in every single potential market, how much money would you make? The TAM, SAM, and SOM should be monetary figures. I've said in pounds, but obviously you could be raising in dollars or euros or a different currency as well. So in whatever currency you're raising in. Um, and if you're pitching to VCs, the TAM should be over a billion for them to be interested. So if you're getting to a TAM number that's like 500 million, go back to the drawing board, think about where all those customers are, how much you're charging them uh, and see whether you can get it higher because that's the amount that they need to have in their head to be able to get the return that they want. Um, we went through Sam and Som in quite a lot of detail, so I'll just skip over those for now. Uh, so your competition, the purpose of this slide isn't that you've listed all of the competition, it's that the investor knows why you're different. So there's two different ways that the majority of founders will list details on the competition slide. You've got this kind of grid view, which will say the name of all of the different competitors and what features or what benefits their product has for investors with like a checkbox and an Xbox. Obviously, all of yours should be checked um, and your competition should have a, a different amount of boxes which are ticked. If you have a competitor and none of the boxes are checked, they are not a competitor. Um, on this graph here, which is the X, you're looking at two um, verticals. So it could be um, price, Oh, it could, it could be something else. And you're just listing yourself as like the best product within this matrix because of X reason. And you can choose what the verticals are yourself. Just make them relevant to the business. So investors have just a bit of context or where, on where you sit in the competitive landscape. And it should all be about why you're different and why you're better than them. Uh, your business model. Um, so this is pretty simple, but a lot of people leave it off. How are you going to make money? Have you made any already? And can you hint at projections? So you don't need to have the full financial forecast, but just a projection for one, three, five years. What I would say, somebody asked about um, how much, whether you look one year into the future or three years into the future or five years into the future with some of the financial projections. I would say that this is for the amount that you're fundraising for in this round. So what are you going to achieve with this? And then you've got what's going to happen afterwards. Um, and that's the milestones that you're raising against, which we talk about at the end as well. Um, so go to market strategy. This was also covered as well. But simply put, it's who are you going to start with? How are you going to reach those people? And why are you starting with that group of people? So it might be that you're starting with students in the UK and the reason why you're starting with students is in the UK is because you used to work across different universities. And so you've already got the network and you've done a bunch of research and you know that they're going to pay X amount and you know how to reach them because you've got that experience already. It's through X, Y, Z channel. So it's not just I'm using SEO and I'm guessing that that's where they're going to be. It's an informed strategy of how you're going to get your first users. Uh, traction. So. Again, I won't go into this in a huge amount of detail. The whole reason is that you're proving that you're onto something. Um, Capital Pilot have a really good breakdown of what different traction is for different business models. Um, and we totally agree with everything they said. Think about revenue users, letters of intent, um, conversations you've had with potential customers, pre-orders, wait list, uh, things like uh, competition wins and stuff. It just doesn't really move the needle with investors. It's great that you've got it, but it's not going to make that much difference to prove that your user is going to pay for your product and therefore you've got a revenue generating business model. Uh, team. So we want to not only know the name and the role of the people in your team, you also want experience and context as to why you're the right team to do this. The logos on the bottom are logos of companies that team members have worked for before. Again, it just adds a bit of credibility um, and it just removes 
words. This is actually one of the most wordy slides we've seen is when everybody writes a full bio for each team member and you just you can't really take it in as the investor. So just keep it succinct. But why are this why is this team the right team to to lead this business forward? Um, by the way, I've also got logo in the bottom right hand corner because we've seen pictures and we get to the end and we have no idea what the company is called because they might have mentioned it. They might have a company name and a product name, and then they never mention it after the first slide. And it's just not clear what the company is called. And if we're going to go away and talk to someone and say, oh, I saw a really good pitch and we don't remember what the business is called, it's a massive missed opportunity. So use every single slide to hammer home the name of your business. And also when you're verbalizing your pitch, make sure you're talking about the name of your business in the pitch. You need to mention it at least three times for an investor to remember the name just psychologically. So it's a simple thing that people just overlook because they know their business so well, but make sure you include it. Why now? Um, this is actually quite important to an investor. What makes this opportunity attractive right now? Is it because the market is growing? Is it because there's a shifting mindset? Why should they give you money for this business today versus waiting a year or, or someone getting the same money for a business that they launched a year ago? Uh, Keep that in mind as well. How much are you raising? So a lot of the time we do see this kind of pie chart of what you're spending money on. So a rough breakdown of what you need the money for. You're raising 500K. How much is going to in-house talent? How much is going to marketing? How much is going to product development? Um, and Farhan at Sare obviously talked yesterday about how he broke that down. The thing that we don't see a lot is what milestones you're going to achieve with that funding. So if you're raising 500K, what is the plan for that 500K in terms of what you want to achieve? Is it that you wanna have a thousand active users? Is it that you wanna have X amount in revenue? Is it that you want to have launched in the UK and another market? You need to talk about what you're spending it on and what you're gonna achieve with it. Um, and again, Farhan yesterday said he massively smashed his goals in terms of what he wanted to achieve, which helps because he's going to ask all of those investors to reinvest in a future round. And they know he's he's an overachiever, which means they're more likely to give him money going forward. So that is the full deck. Each slide needs to have one clear takeaway. Like I said, make sure it's clear what your company name is. And as much as you can take the time to create consistent branding, it really makes a difference, especially if you're a consumer product. Investors want to know that consumers are going to buy into your brand. And so if you have a deck that doesn't look great, they're going to think that you're not going to be able to create social media content or other engaging marketing that's going to make consumers connect with your brand. Um, in terms of the takeaway that you want investors to think, um, I've kind of outlined it as much as I can for every single slide. So you want them to be intrigued and interested in reading more. With the problem, you want them to feel the pain and believe that it's a huge pain. They want the solution to be aligned with the problem. You want them to think as much as possible, I can make a ton of money out of this because that's when they're gonna give you money is when they can make money. They want to understand that you're well-researched, you really understand the market that you're operating in and you've come up with a competitive product which is differentiated from the, the rest of the market. They want to understand how they're going to make money. They want to be con confident that you are the people to execute and you've got the right strategy that you're going to execute to be there. Traction is just like, they're already doing it. This is great. Um, they're already proving that they're onto something. The why now is this could be huge. And the ask is seems well thought through. They know what they're spending the money on. They've asked for the right amount. They're going to achieve realistic goals with it. Um, so this is just a little bit of information about, oh God, is it going backwards and forwards? <laughs> about deck design, just for anyone that doesn't have a deck design yet. Um, I don't know why I skipped forward. Oh yeah, I, I said this already, but if you need to explain too much, investors don't believe you understand. Um, the missed slide financial forecast and product roadmap, you can put that in as an appendix if you want to, but we wouldn't necessarily say that you put it in as an appendix if you're sending your slide deck to an investor ahead of an investor meeting. If you're pitching your deck and you want to have financial forecast and product roadmap ready to bring up in case they ask a question, that's totally fine. So need some help with design. Our design was done by Frederick, who is in this cohort, and we love him. Um, and we think it's 
made a huge improvement to how we come across as a brand overall. Um, but if you just want some simple tips, um, mm. communicate in a bold font. Um, if you use size 100 plus, this is what it will look like. This is size 100 plus on here. Don't go crazy on colors, maximum of two colors per slide. You can pretty much use a white font on most brightly colored backgrounds and it will stand out and look really good. So you can do it on pink, you can do it on green. Express the obvious, don't hint and make things explicit. So if you're putting information on a slide, let's say you're putting this chart on a slide, you have not only got that you've gone from 1K to 2K to 4K to 8K, you've also got an arrow that points upwards that indicates that you're growing. And then you write down that you've had 50% monthly revenue growth as well. You've told that story three times in exactly the same way. And the one key takeaway on that slide is they're growing really fast and you've just made it super explicit. Um, this is just another example. If you're putting your team slide together and you've got the name and their experience, if you want the one key takeaway to be like, this is a shit hot team, write down we're exited founders with lived experience of the problem. Then you're, you're kind of telling them what to think in a very explicit way. Um, we said put product shots in, just be really mindful that if you're using screenshots, it needs to be legible. There's a lot of people that like, try and take a full screen screenshot of something. And by the time it's on the deck, it looks so small and so blurry that it's impossible to read. If you can't get a screenshot of your product that looks good, it's actually easy to just explain it. This is the input, this is the output. If you do this, this happens, and then investor will just get it. Uh, and use Canva. Uh, or other design software, which is also available. We are not sponsored by Canva, um, but it is a great design tool. And there's presets, um, uh, templates in there with charts and graphs and everything that you might need. So if you haven't done any design before, have a look at Canva because it will really help you to just look a bit more professional. Um, I've got a few references uh, if anybody wants to read up on more. Y Combinator, Guy Kawasaki, and a few pieces on Medium as to how to make your pitch deck design look 